Hi everybody, it's your girl Bunny. It's Netflix original series, The Dark Crystal, Age of Resistance. I wanted to give a nice introduction about how this series differs from the original movie that debuted in 1982, The Dark Crystal. We'll go over direction, writers, actors, and what to expect from this amazing series. That's all coming up next. It's Bunny! So before we can even get into the explanations of the movie and the series, we see the name Jim Henson. Jim Henson, The Dark Crystal. Jim Henson, The Dark Crystal, Age of Resistance. We have to understand who Jim Henson is. James Maury Henson is one of the founding fathers with puppeteering, animation, cartoons. You may recognize a lot of his work from your childhood. The voice and the puppeteer of Kermit the Frog, Ernie, only to name a few. Traditional puppeteering, you would have the puppet, you would have the puppeteer, animating and dialoguing something that was a character that was here. You would talk, A is for Apple, correct? Yes, A is for Apple, mm -hmm. yeah. And you would have this animation feeling with the puppet. So Jim Henson had this idea that he wanted to go a step further with the puppeteering and have a full body animation and not just from the neck up. More arms moving, legs, full body, maybe short body, giving the audience a different experience. So in 1982, he developed The Dark Crystal, which gave us a full movie production along with different ideas as the Muppets and you have Frackle Rock and all these different animations to give us an idea of more imagination, more challenging to puppeteering, which set the imagination and the crescendo of just another experience, right? Everything doesn't have to be a movie. Everything doesn't have to be a cartoon. So he wanted to give this a world with this amazing story. Even with the new series on Netflix, we see the same puppets. And I noticed that when they announced they would release this series, a lot of people said, well, the puppets look crappy and why don't they use animation? And why does it look all wobbly? Let's understand the challenge of this. You have not only the voiceover work that go along with the puppets, but these are not just regular puppets. The faces move, the eyes move. You have all of these things that are so challenging in which all of these puppeteers and artists make it look so easy. To a lot of people, it looks crappy, but if you understand the engineering and the thought process with these puppets and what's going on, you'll have a deeper appreciation for everything that's going on when you start to watch the series. So the reason why it's 2019 and the puppets still seem to correlate with the ones that are in 1982, they wanted to keep that feeling. They wanted to keep the viewers in the audience with an understanding for them to not be so different that the stories felt different. So if you keep the animation the same, which is puppeteering, then that's amazing. The improvement is you still have the puppeteering, you have better artistry to go with the faces, you have better movements. Now this time maybe you don't see a string that lifts an arm up, only this time it's more advanced puppeteering to where the engineering is underneath the puppet and you just see an arm or you just see eyes moves, move or the mouth or the neck or the head. So there is a lot of improvement 2019 comparing to the 1982 
movie. So that's why you still see the puppetry. Also, another thing that has been improved, they've added animation, they've added CGI to help with the puppeteering. They've added in if something is rolling, if they want to give a bird's eye view of a town or a village. So there are a lot of improvements from 19, 82 to the 2019 version, you'll just see the same emotional feeling with the puppeteering. So if you keep that in mind, you'll have a wonderful experience with this new series. What I like to do with a lot of my reviews is go behind the scenes and explain to you who the writers are, the directors, and the actors because a lot of the time if we know who those people are that we could maybe peek and have some interest in watching something because a lot of the times we see series or we see movies and just from the preview or maybe just from a snippet of what we've seen we toss away the interest and we don't pay it any mind so i love to just what I want to do with this channel and continue to do is give you that behind the scenes information just to diversify things that you normally watch. Now let's talk about the writers for this amazing series. We have Jeffrey Addis, an NYU School of Arts graduate, amazing producer and writer cred. You may know him from Grey's Anatomy and director cred of The Majestic Theater Co. Will Matthews, amazing producer, amazing writer. He's most well known for his writing and directing in Rick and Steve, the happiest gay couple in all the world. There's not enough time to talk about this guy, this Emmy award winning writer, creator, comic book, movie, television, you name it, he's done it. Javier Grillo Mock Squash, look him up. His career is one to study. Now let's talk about this amazing cast. When I read about who would be involved and who was interested in this series around the time they started to film in 2017, that made me even more excited to look at this amazing series. Now, I am a huge Game of Thrones fan. So when I started to read that a lot of the actors were from Game of Thrones and a lot of other series that I've watched that I'm a big fan of, once again, enticing me, pulling me into the series. That is something that should entice you into watching things that maybe you've never seen. If you trust their acting in other um, productions, it should push you towards not only being a fan, but really appreciate appreciating the actor's diversity. There are too many amazing actors on this cast, but I'll only name a few just to give you an idea of what to expect. We have Tyron Egerton, you may know him from the Kingsman series, and Rocketman. Many of you know my girl, actress Lena Headey from the hit show Game of Thrones as Queen Cersei of King's Landing. <laughs> we got Natalie Dormer from Game of Thrones. Natalie Emmanuel from Game of Thrones. I don't have enough time, okay, to talk about Miss Helena Carter, okay? Fight Club, King's Speech, Harry Potter. Her resume is longer than this video. Many of you have heard about this guy, okay? Living legend Mark Hamill, like this little movie called Star Wars. Don't know if you know about that. Oh my God. Don't get me started on Mr. Mark Strong, okay? The Kingsman, Henry VIII, Sherlock Holmes, The Long Firm. I could, I, oh, come on, his resume is just too much. As I mentioned, those are only some of the talented actors that we have on this series cast. I look forward to you joining me as I review and recap all of the episodes of the series. Make sure you subscribe, hit that notification bell so you don't miss any posts, comment, thumbs up, thumbs down. Make sure that you follow me on Instagram at the same profile name, officialbun underscore E. I hope that you subscribe to my channel and I hope that it would encourage you to be more diversified in things that you watch or things that you experience. With all of the different episodes that I review, I'm going to explain them in such great detail that even if you don't have Netflix, you will be entertained. <laughs> like this video, let me know what you think. I 
I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope you got the information that you needed. I'll also do a review of the 1982 movie, although I will do the review of that movie after I review this series. There's a big reason why. Don't want to give it away because it will be a big spoiler alert in understanding how the series in the movie intertwines. All right, see you next time. Bye.